Chances are, no matter which game you play, you don't just want to be good while you're playing it. You want to look good. From MOBAs to sports games, fighting games, battle royales, arena brawlers, auto chess clones, and of course, tax shooters. Cosmetic focused microtransactions are everywhere. And whether you're using an in-game currency or real money, many so-called skins have a set value. Some of the prices are determined by the publisher or the developer of the game, while others change based on how the community rates them. But nowadays, certain games have outgrown their humble old stores and evolved into having a full-blown skin economy in the real world. And it's fair to say that no game's skin economy comes even close to CSGO's. No, dude. No, no, no! Oh my god! It's got these four stickers on it, and these stickers are currently worth $40,000 each. So that's about $160,000 of skins on a single gun. Three, two, one, tight holo, tight holo, tight holo, tight holo, tight holo, tight holo, tight Over the past couple of years, the CSGO skin market has gone absolutely nuclear. Some cosmetics go for hundreds of thousands of dollars, and by purchasing certain skins, you might actually be making a real-life investment. But how the hell did we get here? Like, how is it possible that some of these digital pixels are valued at such ludicrous amounts of money? Let's find out together. All right, so today is the day that I have been waiting for for a very, very long time. They finally let me make a Cracked just about CSGO skins. I'm sure some of you already know that I am something of a skin fiend, but for those of you who don't, or don't know very much about CSGO skins to begin with, let me enlighten you. Back in August of 2013, Valve released what was arguably CSGO's most iconic and important patch ever. The arms deal update added over a hundred weapon skins into the game for players to equip and collect. You could get cases from playing matches and then purchase a key to open them. And then you just sit there and pray that you got something serviceable. But most importantly, Valve decided that they wanted these cases and skins to be available for purchase on the Steam marketplace and, and this is crucial, tradable between individual accounts. Now, this was obviously designed so that players could just pick a particular skin and either buy it or trade for it. But since there wasn't really anyone monitoring these interpersonal transactions, this opened the door for a sea of scammers. Thank you, Cosmo, for the the the, the little uh, little thing. Wait. Some players fell victim to the countless Steam impersonators trading skins away to scammers before realizing their mistake. Others were suckered in by skin gambling sites, whose predatory infrastructures amassed their fair share of victims. These early days housed some of the darkest moments in the history of CSGO. Not to mention one of the dumbest, most memed upon apology videos ever made. I have no idea how I'm going to record this video, dude. And today T. Martin made an apology video for it, and it is turbo shitty. So I wanted to just kind of talk about it. So the video starts with T. Martin talking to his special guest Airbud, and they're running a promotional for Airbud's new movie, Airbud Gambles on CSGO Skins. As the years went on, skin gambling continued to be a very hot topic within the general gaming community. So more and more sites where you could purchase skins with real money and eliminate the need to gamble began to pop up. But how exactly were you supposed to know how much a skin was actually worth? Players could technically list these skins for however much they wanted, and some sites used site-specific currency. So how could you avoid getting ripped off? Well, there are a number of reasons why certain skins cost inordinately more than others, most of which have to do with looks and rarity. 
And when those two things come together in that perfect combination, that's when you stumble upon the big bucks. Non-stop grays, so let's go. You know I opened a knight before in these? Yeah, Open no, a, yeah, sorry. yeah. What the f What the f There are eight different skin grades within CSGO, ranging from consumer grade all the way to covert, special, rare, and contraband. Some feature various gun skins, while others are reserved for higher ticket items like gloves and knives. Next, we have what is arguably the most important factor for determining a skin's value, and that is wear. There are five different wear ratings in the game. Battle Scarred, Well Worn, Field Tested, Minimal Wear, and Factory New. Battle Scarred means that a skin is super beat up, and Factory New means that it's in pristine or near pristine condition. But when a skin is unboxed from a crate, it is also assigned a number, ranging anywhere from 0.00 to 1.00. And this, my friends, is where you get the float. Float values play a massive role in determining the price of a skin. And, luckily for you guys, and for me, because I'm kind of out of breath, I brought along my boy Colton to help explain them. And now, the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. Well, I may not be glad that you've dragged me out here for yet another Counter-Strike video. At least you let me talk about a computer science term for a change, so... I guess I'll let it slide. Float, short for floating point, refers to a system for representing decimal numbers to some fixed precision in binary. What does that have to do with weapon skins? Well, if you inspect any skin in CSGO, then hover over the information icon at the bottom of your screen, you'll see four things. Finish style, finish catalog, pattern template, and wear rating. And that last one is the one we actually want to focus on. The decimal number that makes up the wear rating is what these CSGO skin fiends call the float value, which by default actually ranges from 0.06 to 0.8 and can change from skin to skin. So best to do your research on the individual skin you're eyeing up. Not often I get to correct Dimitri on something Counter-Strike related. There is some really cool math that goes into how the game actually generates that number. If you're a fellow math or CS nerd, I mean, I mean, computer science, not Counter-Strike. Then I recommend checking out this post from csgoflow.com that goes into way more detail than I can in this video. To put it simply, the higher the wear rating, the higher the opacity value on the scratch and wear texture on top of the skin, meaning a more beat up looking AK or an op whose colors aren't quite as crisp and bright. Factory new flow values hover between effectively zero and 0 0.07, with the lowest possible float currently being the 0.00000000089966M249 Gator Mesh. Minimal wear is between 0.07 and 0.15, field tested up to 0.37, well worn up to 0.44, and lastly, battle scarred from 0.44 to essentially one. Now obviously factory new is the gold standard. Almost everyone wants their skins to look as nice as possible, but you can often find low float minimal wear skins that look pretty damn close to factory new. While Valve has intentionally left gaps in the float values at the edges of each tier, the lowest float number within each one will often look better than what the name suggests. So buying low float skins with slightly worse wear can help you find some sweet deals. And speaking of sweet deals, for this episode of Crack, we've teamed up with Predator Gaming to bring you my own personal holiday gift guide. Wait a minute, a segment within a segment and now we're just somewhere else inside my house? I guess we have to keep the lights on somehow. Anyway, here's a look at my holiday gift guide. I recently got an internet upgrade, and now I need an ethernet switch that can handle more than gigabit speeds, preferably something like the 10 gigabit M4300 from Netgear to manage all my NDI needs. One of my favorite ways to disconnect from the internet though is with my guitars, and I've been hunting for a Gretsch Streamliner for a while now. The P90 pickups in these things are just perfect. And of course, with so many people traveling for the holidays, even gamers, and 
video editors, a powerful laptop is at the top of a lot of lists, and Predator Gaming is giving the people what they want with the Predator Triton 300SE. A slim and sleek laptop with the power of a 12th gen Intel Core i7 processor, custom engineered cooling, and NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 series graphics. More than enough to game or even edit on the go. And all of this computing horsepower can be found at BestBuy.com. And now we wormhole our way out of two segments. Back to Dimitri. And that was the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. All right, so float values can play an extremely crucial role in determining the value of a skin. But there is an even added layer of complexity, and that is pattern templates. Sometimes referred to as a skin seed, a pattern template can range between 1 and 1,000. Now, this can drastically change the look and color of a skin, and it's for this reason that certain case-hardened skins, like Blue Gems, are some of the most expensive skins on the market. I had a guy reach out to me who didn't have the owner added because that guy is kind of like really private. He's called New Branch and he's held it for four years or five years or something. He told me to reach out to him with an offer of 1.2 million in Bitcoin. And I'm not talking about USD, I'm talking about Euros, which converts to 1.5 million USD. Now, we have seen rifle skins sell for hundreds of thousands of dollars before. Like this super sick scar patterned AK with four Titan hollows and this M4A4 Howl with four I by power hollows. Certain crafts with Cato 14 Titan hollows or I by power hollows are valued at insanely high prices because the major was eight years ago and you can't unbox them anymore. And, well, these teams no longer exist. Three, two, one. It's common for collectors who own high tiers such as these to lend them out to CSGO pros so they can flex them during their official matches. There's even a Discord server that was established in service of facilitating this very exchange. The Chinese skin market exploded when CSGO was released there in 2017. And since then, Buff163 has become the best way to verify a skin's real price. Think of it as the unofficial blue book of CSGO cosmetics. Whatever it's listed for on Buff, that's how much a skin is worth. That said, there are tons of skin collectors out there who are on the hunt for items that have never been seen before. Why? Well, because some of the most expensive CSGO skins imaginable haven't even been unboxed yet. China is actively trying to hunt it. If, if we get a number one scar pattern, Stat Trek Factory New, it would be around about a million dollars. And as much as I've talked about everyone wanting Factory New Blue Gems and Souvenir Dragon Lores and the like, there is a wave of collectors out there hell-bent on ignoring the skin status quo and pursuing the absolute ugliest, most scratched-up skins they can get their hands on, thus driving up the prices of high float items as a result. I suppose there is a certain beauty in decay. One of them is this USPS Kill Confirmed, the worst condition covert skin in the world. This skin's also got six nines in its float too, so whoever unboxed it got insanely lucky to get a skin this bad. Or insanely unlucky, I guess. It depends on how you look at it. So, what have we all learned today? Well, whether ugly, beautiful, or just prohibitively expensive, CSGO's skin economy is in a league of its own. It's become an entire business and source of content for many people around the world. Things have gotten so crazy that you could quite literally make a fortune just by unboxing the right skin. So if anyone's ever harassing you over how much you opted to spend on virtual pixels in Counter-Strike, Make sure you let them know how much it was when you bought it versus how much it's worth now. CSGO skins are like fingerprints. Everyone is unique. Some of us just want skins that look cool, while others want to collect the rarest of the rare so that they can flex on scrubs and, you know, let everyone know that they have something special. The skin market might seem kind of intimidating at first, and in a sense it is. But once you take the time to learn about it and understand it, appreciate it, you will soon understand that there's nothing quite like it.